Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and I spent about three hours with Battlefield 2042. A big thank you to EA and DICE for allowing me to check the game out, and I'm super stoked today to share my thoughts with all of you. Now, for those who are new here and never seen a Maddie preview or Maddie review, the long and short of it is pretty much that I only do previews where I can lay my hands on the game. So there were previous previews for Battlefield where it was you could watch the gameplay, and a ton of outlets ate that up. I've never been about that life. If I can play the game and say what I want, that's the type of preview I do. So you can get the most unfiltered take that you can find on the internet. That's what I'm all about. So if you're into that stuff, know that there's many more previews and reviews on the way this year. And of course, next year and so on and so forth as the new generation of consoles really kicks it up a notch. And with that, let's talk about Battlefield 2042. So this is one of the most anticipated first person shooters of this year. And in a while, probably, it's looked really good throughout the trailers. And I was super excited to dive into this one. Normally, I don't have any hype diving into previews, but this one in particular, I'll admit it. I was pretty excited getting into it. And I got to say that playing it on my brand new PC was a cathartic experience. So just know that. This is running on a beefy rig right now. And the reason I mention that is because of all the different PC configs out there. Some people may have more broken experiences than others. I mention this because my playthrough was kind of buggy. I would have something like this happen where... I don't know really what's going on. There's no map. It's just vehicles and I don't know. <laughs> so this happened every now and then. They told us this was a multi-month old build, but still I've learned after Cyberpunk not to fully put my trust into everything companies say and that they will, without hesitation, pull the wool over both the press and creators' eyes to make sure that people get excited for their games. So it's something to be wary of, but this is running on an i9 3080 with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So I'm playing at 1440, 60 FPS, going without a hitch, man. It was a beautiful game, running smooth as butter for the most part. In the beginning, it was a little choppy, but something ironed out internally. I don't know what happened. I'm not a PC guy big time here. And it just ran fine afterwards. Out of all the modes that were available in the full package, All Out Warfare, Hazard Zone, and Portal, we only had access to All Out Warfare. We were playing Conquest on Orbital. So let's talk about Orbital as a map. It's been a while since I've played a Battlefield game. I've skipped out on a couple of the previous ones. They just haven't grabbed me as long-term as something like Battlefield 3 or 4 had to some extent. So I was really looking forward to this also because I was wondering, can Battlefield just win Maddie back? I'm not anti-Battlefield, but it has yet to really absorb me like it once did when I was in high school slash college. And so this map was super encouraging because Orbital is such a dense map, right? So there are, as most Battlefield maps are, a way where you could cookie cut this into like eight different maps in other multiplayer modes, but it's this one gargantuan battlefield, pardon the pun. So I remember I was going up in my first match, this one tower, and it's all these grapples and stair sets and there's so much detail in these buildings. And then I get to the rooftop and you can see just how massive the battlefield is and everything that's happening all the way on the other end of the map. And that's what really impressed me off the bat was there are these tall structures, buildings you can enter, destructible environment, like trees you can mow over, of course, buildings that you can run down. On top of that, it's huge. And there's so much room for these 64 v 64 multiplayer where I was having an absolute blast for the most part. I imagine most people are familiar with what Battlefield is by this point in time, so I'm really going to focus on defining features that I picked up on during my preview rather than re-explaining what Battlefield is, which is just a FPS game set in a gigantic battlefield with tons of vehicles and weapons of destruction. So the loadout system, let's talk about that. At the beginning, you'll pick your specialist, whether it be assault, which gives you a grappling hook or you're quicker on zip lines. You could be an engineer, which has a sentry gun, a recon, who has a drone for, of course, picking up on enemies without exposing yourself on top of a movement sensor. And then the medic has a heal pistol and allows you to revive at full health. Then you can decorate your primary weapon, which would be an assault rifle, SMG, a marksman rifle, sniper rifle, an LMG, or shotguns, and your secondary weapon, which is effectively handguns, on top of your throwables and your gadgets, such as the ammo crates, health crates, repair tools, remote explosives, rocket launchers. And this is what's really cool about this game, is in previous Battlefield games, the medic would always have the medic kit. But now you can have the assault specialist with the grapple hook with the medic crate and I really just liked how you could mix and match that because that carries throughout the whole experience. So after you're done building your loadout, then you get into the game. And in my case, because I was using a controller, I know, I know, a lot of you like your keyboard and mouse. I'm a controller pleb, I'll admit it. But I held LB 
and it brings up this whole customizable weapon menu, which you can do very quickly on the fly. And I could swap out my scope, my grip, laser pointers, all of that stuff to change my weapon for certain scenarios. I love this feature so much. Why is that? Because in previous Battlefield games, I'll pick the recon class, right? So I'm running around with my sniper, doing work but you can only play in a sniper's position. It does not allow for much mobility unless you're like an MLG pro. So for me, I was able to remove the scope and then move into combat in a little more CQC because I wanted to get in on that action a little bit more. I wanted to move to a spot where there was more action happening, but now you could do so a little bit more comfortably. It doesn't mean that you're gonna dominate the match, but there's a flexibility in this class system that bends a lot to what you need, but never feels quite broken. So for me, like I said, the Marksman was probably the best example of that, but there were times that I was swapping out from a scope on my assault rifle that was more of an ACOG, four times sight, to something like a red dot, because I was going from medium range to close range combat. And that just felt really good. Of course, as you unlock more parts, you can customize the weapon more, but to me, this was absolutely, hands down, the most standout feature, because it allowed for me to tackle scenarios in any way which was supported by the class system that you sort of built before dropping into the battlefield, wherever that may be. The level of destruction in this game was also pretty cool, right? Of course, in battlefield games, you've come to expect that you can blow up holes and walls, and that stuff is awesome. But the destruction comes in a really new, refreshing form now in these dynamic extreme weather events. This was amazing to see how it progressed because in my first match, I started it up, it's sunny out, the map is beautiful, then it becomes overcast. We start to get a slight drizzle, then it's pouring, and each of these creates their own little gameplay moments because once it starts to really pour, it's harder to see enemies. But then, then the dynamic weather event rolls in, and now you've got this twister blazing around the battlefield, taking out trees. There were people who were parachuting into the twister itself, it was wild to see, but it also forced movement around the map. That's what all this does, right? You have the dynamic class system, so you're swapping out all your different parts on your weapon to get you moving. And then you've got this twister blazing through the battlefield. If it's coming your way, it's like, I got to get out of here. So that's what I like about it is that there's a lot more mobility in this battlefield game compared to what I've experienced in the past, which is everyone gets a little comfortable. They find their favorite perch on the hill. They pick you all day. You start to get spawn sniped. It's a little bit annoying. This whole game and the way it's built encourages mobility. It encourages you to get around, get in the action without being so in your face aggressive. But I'm just happy to say that when we saw the dynamic weather events in the E3 trailer for Battlefield, it played out exactly how I had hoped. It doesn't arrive every single match. I played two matches without it and then it came back for a third. But it is something that as it takes over the field, I mean, you gotta get out of the way, right? You want to avoid this. And it's going to force your opponents out of the way so you can catch people like running into the fray or out of the fray. It's awesome. I really was big on this mechanic. Now, this one is for very particular Battlefield players who are like me. Okay. So I talked a bit about the map in the beginning and how I liked it because of its scope and scale and its density. But what about folks who are like me and don't like to get into vehicles? Okay. I know there aren't many of us in Battlefield who don't like to get into vehicles. But for me, it's like... Yeah, I could sit in that helicopter and shoot you all day and rack up 40 kills. That would be great and all, but that doesn't feel rewarding like outgunning you, at least in my book. And no, it's not like an ego thing. It's ju it's genuine just like, I think it's not as fun. But can you get around the map in a meaningful way? Can you get from point A to point B quick enough to justify our play style, our very niche play style within Battlefield? I'm happy to say yes. Of course, there's plenty of vehicles that are just designed for mobility, like trucks that you can just get in and drive around and go to the next control point. But there were also little shortcuts in the map, like tunnel systems that you could go from literally one end of the map to the other, but just cut right up the gut of it. So you're not driving around a bunch of roads. You get into the action a lot quicker. Of course, the battlefield having the spawning on your teammates mechanic, this makes it where you can get into battle quicker in general. But thanks to the way the map was laid out, at least this map in particular, it wasn't like I was going extreme stretches of time without encounters. There was only one point in my three matches where I was like, okay, who wants to have a gunfight? I'm getting a little bored here. Other than that, though, it was pretty consistent encounters. 
it was a really good time and I, I just overall was pretty impressed with the whole product. Let's talk about gunplay because after playing a ton of Halo Infinite and a ton of Call of Duty, playing Battlefield felt different in a good way. I really still love the bullet drop mechanic. That's always been in Battlefield since as long as I can remember. But I just wanted to shout it out here um, because it's such a defining feature for the franchise that I don't think enough people talk about. You know, there's leading your bullets, right? Like in Halo, you lead it. But I'm talking about in Battlefield where if you're sniping someone across the map, you got to line that sucker up, put it in front of them, put it above them a little bit. And I was trying my best. That is a skill that you cannot just pick up and play with. You've got to learn it again. And even as someone who played a lot of Battlefield, I could not. So I really just appreciate stuff like that. The guns themselves felt good. There was an AR, the M5, that was seemingly the go-to gun in this preview. I think that's less of an OP sign and more based off the map. So just know if you're going across multiple previews, as I think you should be, um, that you're going to see this gun a lot. I think it's just because of the map that we were using because... SMGs I used in my first match. And I was like, this is fine, but I have to force like CQC constantly, which is tough on such a big map. Snipers worked, but a fully auto AR is that good in between. It's like if I'm in a medium range encounter, close range encounter, I'm equipped for the job. And if I really need to go full on long range, I can do that as well. So just know if you see this weapon a lot, it's not because it's busted. It's just because it was most ideal for this map. So I didn't get to like use the shotgun in any meaningful way. The LMG I didn't get to use in any meaningful way, uh, which I think is a good sign that there are weapons for specific maps. And I can't wait to see more when they start to chop up this map and we get to play in all different ways. Like I said, there's this whole rocket section that I'm like, this could be a map of its own. It's so huge. And I really just appreciate it for what it was. So yeah, after three hours, you know, it's still Battlefield. There wasn't so much there that I was like, oh my God. This is a game changer. To me, it didn't feel, I gotta be honest, like as refreshing as a Halo Infinite multiplayer experience has so far. We don't know how the end product for either of these games will end up. But Battlefield 2042 was, in my opinion, at least convincingly good. It was like, okay, this should be solid. Only thing I was worried about were some of the bugs I experienced. I thought that could be a cause for concern because they're saying, oh, it's a multi-month old build. But yet this is going to be, as far as I'm aware, the beta that all of you are going to be playing when it releases to the public in the next couple of days but i just wanted to share of course my thoughts on battlefield 2042 here in this video today so let me know your thoughts in the comments down below what do you think of battlefield any questions anything that i missed in this let me know in the comments down below other than that follow me on twitter follow me on instagram those links are in the description down below and a big thank you to all the patrons and all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here stay sexy stay active i love you all peace